and take you through um, a GL English practice paper. So let's get started. So we've got um, the introduction. Now, if I read it here, it says in this book, there are some stories, there are passages from different types of books. We hope you'll find them interesting and informative. You'll be asked some questions on the passages themselves and on using books in general. As you work through the booklet, refer to the glossary and contents page whenever you wish. So the GL English is split up into different types of books. And without me, you may have genres. So you've got maybe some fiction, so made up stories, some non-fiction, some factual stories, fact-based stories. You might have stories from different types of books. So you've got storybooks, maybe you have guidebooks or newspapers or things like that. And they'll ask you some comprehension questions. And as you'll find, as you go through these, the comprehension questions all kind of um, are quite similar. So they'll repeat themselves a little bit, won't be exactly the same, but the types of questions that are asked are all very, very similar. Now, as we go through this, you'll see hopefully some of the similarities. So the first one's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So let's go to this one first. So let's read the passage through, then answer the questions on the following pages. If there are any words you don't understand, you may find them in the glossary at the end of this booklet. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now, rather than me reading through this, okay, the whole thing individually, I'm not going to do that. You would do that when you're doing the paper, but I'm not. I'm not doing it because I'm going to show you how you can find the answers almost by not reading the paper. Now, you would read it, and I would recommend that you read it when you're doing your paper, but I'm not going to do it just for time and because it'll actually showcase the little tips that I use to find answers. So let me show you what I mean. I'm not going to read it yet. I'll read bits of it as I go. You can see it's about a page and a half and I'm going to read the questions. It says, please answer these questions. Look at the passage again if you need to. And obviously we do need to. We haven't read it yet. You should choose the best answer or mark its letter on your answer sheet. So you'll have an answer sheet where we're going to circle it. You would put an, a line through the answer sheet. What prevented Alice from making a daisy chain? She wasn't sure if she could be bothered to gather the materials. She didn't enjoy making daisy chains. She wanted to read instead. She fell down a hole or she would rather have had a conversation. So the thing I'm looking for is keywords here. Daisy chain, okay? So I want to look for particular words that are important. So I'm going to look for the word daisy chain. Now, I prevented it's quite a big word. Prevented means stopped, okay? So what stopped Alice from making a daisy chain? So I'm going to go to the top. You'll also find that the first question generally occurs near the start of the passage. Not always, but generally. So I'm going to scan for the word daisy chain. Scan is where you run your eye over the paper just looking for specific words. The word daisy or chain. So I'm not even reading it. I'm just scanning. I'm just scanning. Boom. Daisy chain, okay? Just... There. And let's now read that sentence. So she was considering in her own mind as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid, whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. So she wasn't sure if she could be bothered to gather the materials needed. She didn't enjoy making daisy chains. She wanted to read instead. She fell down a hole. She would rather have had a conversation. Clearly, that's A. She wasn't sure if she could be bothered getting up. Two, where did the rabbit disappear from Alice's sight? Now, we just went just to the rabbit there, the pit of the rabbit there. Um, so let's go back. When suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take it out of take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it, and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. It's quite a long passage to get to the answer, but we've got it there. Clearly it's a rabbit hole. But we can read it just to make sure a field no rabbit hole a well a bank behind the hedge. Now it was behind the hedge, but it went into a rabbit hole. 
What first struck Alice that, what first struck Alice as unusual about the rabbit? It was speaking, it took a watch from its waistcoat pocket, it went down a rabbit hole, and pink eyes, it was white. So what first made her think it was unusual? There was nothing very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. So initially she doesn't think it's really odd that it talks. She probably should, but she doesn't. Um, but when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet. For it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. So the first thing that she notices that she finds strange is the fact that it had a waistcoat, waistcoat pocket. Four, what did Alice do with the jar of marmalade? Well, I haven't got the jar of marmalade yet. Did she open it, drop it? She put it in the cupboard. She labeled it orange marmalade or she put it on a shelf. So we're gonna scan again for the word marmalade. Now we're roughly right here and we haven't heard of any marmalade yet. So we're gonna scan for marmalade. Nothing here, so we're in the last part of it. I can see already the word marmalade there, but let's check if there's one before it. So we're just scanning for the word marmalade. She, and it's just here. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labelled orange marmalade, but to her great disappointment, it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing somebody, so managed to put it into one of the cupboards as she fell past it. So, she put it in a cupboard. Why didn't Alice read her sister's book? Her sister wouldn't let her. She wanted to have a conversation instead. It didn't have illustrations or dialogue in it. She didn't like reading books or she was too tired to read. So why didn't she read her sister's book? Let's have a look. So book may be a good thing. And we'll go back up because we we'll may go to the top just to check. Okay, I can see the word book here because we didn't see book for the rest of that you see. So it's good to always check that. And we've got the word book here. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? So she didn't like the book because it didn't have any illustrations or dialogue in it. Pictures or conversations. How do we know that the well was very deep? It took a long time to get to the bottom because it had a loud echo, because it had cupboards and shelves, because it was disguised as a rabbit hole, or because it was too dark to see anything properly. So we we're going back to where the well was, which was roughly around here. Uh, the well, sorry, the, the, the hole, not the well, sorry, my mistake. It was the well, sorry, it was the well. So we were the well. Okay, I can see the word well there and the word deep. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. And you can see there, look, Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found her falling down a very deep well. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly. So we know it's deep because she's falling for a very long time. So it took a long time to get to the bottom. Which word in the first paragraph is closest to the meaning because it's in meaning to glance. So glance means looked. So I could already work it out without actually having to look at it. So tired, no, sitting, no, pictures, no, beginning. It's probably peeped, but let's just double check. The first paragraph is the first block of text, which is just here. Okay, so glanced. I was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank of the bank. Nothing to do. She had peeped into the book, glanced, looked into the book. Okay, looked. Just. Yeah, peeped into the book. What is meant by the phrase, there was nothing so very remarkable in that? So that's whenever she sees the uh, rabbit talking. It was not an unusual occurrence. It, it was not an ordinary event. It seemed peculiar. No one made any remarks about it. The rabbit made a remark. It means she thought it wasn't a very unusual occurrence. Now it is, but initially she thinks it's not. What are the adjectives in line eight? Nice easy one, adjectives we know are describing words. So rabbit is a noun, eyes are a noun, it's not gonna be that. White and pink are adjectives, it could be that. Ran and close, or well, ran usually is not that because it's a doing word. Suddenly is an adverb. 
with and her um, are not bad as well, can be pronouns as well. Um, so it's going to be white and pink, but we can double check just to make sure. And the lines are usually at the side there, line eight. So it's just before line 10, there's eight, nine and eight. White rabbit with pink, white and pink eye. White rabbit, pink eyes. Sometimes you don't even need to look at the passage. 10, what is the adverb? So it's going to be a describing a verb. And usually they end in ly, but not always. So it's probably fortunately, but let's just double check. Let's read it here, 16 I believe it was, line 16. All right. She ran across the field and, and, and un, unfortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole. Okay. Ran's not, feed is not, see is not, she is not. It is fortunately. It's describing uh, how, you, how she did something, how you did something. Okay, you can see there how we were able to do that passage without actually reading it all the way through. Now again, I would recommend that you do that, but just shows you the skills that you can actually use. So this is the other type of question that you get with these where you have some grammar and punctuation and things like that. And there'll be one mistake in the line or no mistakes and you have to find out where it is. So in this passage, there are some spelling mistakes. On each numbered line, there's either one mistake or no mistake. Find the group of words with the mistake in it and mark the letter in your sheet. We're going to circle here. If there's no mistake, choose the option N on your answer sheet and we'll just put a wee N beside it here to show you. Using laptops can be incredibly useful in the classroom. Typing on a keyboard is, and I was about to say, oh no mistakes, but keyboard is spelled incorrectly. Okay, keyboard, board, B-O-A-R-D. Typing on a keyboard is very easy and can be faster than writing down information. Okay, so again, typing on a keyboard is very easy and can be faster than writing down information for pupils with poor handwriting. Well, this is going to be here. Okay, now, well, for pupils with poor handwriting, type notes can be easier to read and simple to edit. No, that's okay, that's fine. So that's a big error. I was about to say that might be a mistake, but it's not, it's a full sentence um, because it's a new topic or a new idea. For pupils with poor handwriting, type notes can be easier to read and simple to edit. Easier is spelled wrong. Okay. Being connected to the internet can help with researching projects and topics. Researching is spelled wrong. Okay, searching, S-E-A-R-C-H-I-N-G. There are many different activities, interactive, sorry, games available, which are fun and could help students really, really spot wrong, two L's, enjoy learning. Many children may not have computers at home, so having a laptop, no mistakes there, at school may be the first time they have a real chance to explore the technology. School, I only missed that, spelled incorrectly. Okay. Laptops in the classroom are better, better spot wrong. That's easy, these can be, as soon as you find that mistake, you mark it on and move on because there only is ever one. Um, better than computer stations in a computer suite as kids can move around, around spot wrong, the room to work in different groups and can also fold the screen down when they need to listen, listen spot wrong, what, to what the teacher is saying. So this is another passage, and this is a passage called Gorillas. It looks not fiction, but more fact-based. We're not going to read it again. We're going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to go down. It's about a page and a half again. Um, and we're going to have a look at this. So again, according to the passage, the true statement is, so one of these is true. An adult female gorilla can be six foot and 500 pounds. An adult male gorilla can have an arm span of six feet. A male the males are generally half the size of the females. Gorillas are not as hairy as humans. An adult female gorilla can be over four foot, 200 pounds. Now, that's difficult to actually search for things. It's not asking you to find a specific thing, so it's hard to scan. So I'm just going to look for the bit of the passage that has information like pounds, feet, six feet, things like that. And we'll have a read at it. So we're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to have a look at that. And we're just going to scan. So I can see 200 pounds, I can see four and a half. Let's have a look at that. Primates are the family of animals that include monkeys, apes and humans. Gorillas are the largest species of primates. A mature male gorilla can
can be six foot tall and weigh 500 pounds. His arm span can be eight feet across and he can be as strong as, uh, strong as four to eight human men. The males are usually twice as big as the females. Female gorillas grow to four and a half feet tall and weigh around 200 pounds. Hard to remember all that. Let's have a quick look. Can we get rid of anything? So for example, I'll just spot the one. The gorilla's not as hairy as humans. Doesn't mention anything like that, so we'll get rid of that. Okay? Now you probably wouldn't score it out, but you can if you want. Um, an adult female gorilla can be six foot five hundred pounds. No lot was to do with meals, so get rid of that. An adult male gorilla can have an arm span of six feet, no one's eight feet. The meals are generally half the size of the females. No, it's the other way around. The females are half the size. An adult female gorilla can be four foot two hundred pounds. Correct, and we can check that if you want, but that is there. A group of gorillas is called a herbivore, a silverback, a troop, a nest, or a species. So we're going to look for group, the word group. It's probably going to be in the next passage, but let's have a look. So we're going to have a look. Um, okay, not seeing it there. Okay, not seeing group. Ah, group. Gorillas live in groups of 6 to 12 called bands or troops. Troops, I believe, one of them, I think. Ah, uh, troop. Okay. The main physical difference between gorillas and humans is number of fingers and toes, position of ears, number of teeth, emotional reactions. Gorillas have stronger arms than legs. So, some things you might already know, like I'm pretty certain they have the same amount of fingers and toes. and possibly even teeth, but let's have a look here. Um, and we'll look for difference or difference. Maybe even the word humans, because that's what we're talking about comparing. So there's humans. Like humans, gorillas have five toes on each foot and five fingers in each hand. Opus, opposable thumbs and big toes. Small ears on the side of their head and 32 teeth. That's all similarities. Unlike us, their arms are longer and more muscular than their legs, and their toes look like thumbs. So that's one of the things I just realised there, that it is they have stronger arms than legs. Okay, because the rest of them are all very similar. How long can they live in their natural habitat? So we'll be looking for the word years or even habitat. So I can see the word years there. Gorillas can live for 35 years in the wild and they can live for over 50 years in captivity. Now, it says their natural habitat. Habitat's where someone lives. So in the wild is where they live, so it's be 35 years. Okay, which is just here. Gorillas belong to a species called monkeys, apes, humans, primates, herbivores. Now, I, I recall that from reading it earlier. Um, but it says primates are the family of animals that include monkeys, apes, and humans. Gorillas are the largest species of primates. So species was the word we could have searched for, and it's going to be primates. Why would a gorilla stand up straight? To protect its knuckles, to demonstrate hostility or enthusiasm, to look human in the eye, to see over tall objects, or to look taller than a female. So we're going to look up stand or straight and see if we can find it. Okay, let's we'll start off with this one. Not there, no. Let's have a look. Did I miss it there, maybe? Okay, so we'll go back down here. Uh, ah, stand, there's stand for example. They don't stand upright very often, except to chest slap to indicate aggression or excitement. So when they're excited or they're angry, they stand up to hit their chests. So that's going to be protect its knuckles, no. Demonstrate hostility or enthusiasm, yeah, probably. Look at him in the eye, no. Tall objects, no. Female, no. How can some gorillas communicate with humans? Humans can understand gorillas' spoken language, sign language, body language, facial expression using seven. We actually just read that, right? I just read it here. Uh, and it was just around here language. They cannot speak, although they can't understand human spoken language. Gorillas have also been taught sign language in captivity, in which they're able to communicate with humans through sign language as well as just there. Which emotional reactions do humans and gorillas have in common? Crying when upset, shouting when angry, smiling when happy, being quiet when thoughtful, trembling when afraid. So let's look for emotional reaction or emotion. Okay, so we're going to look for... 
Let's see. Okay, I'm going to see some emotions here. I see the word cry, I see the word laugh, I see the word emotion. Let's read this one here. So we've read this bit first already about the big toes and about their arms. Their bodies are covered by thick dark hair. Gorillas are very intelligent and share a full range of emotions with humans. They laugh when they're tickled and cry when they're sad or hurt. However, when they cry, they do not produce tears, only sound. So they cry and they laugh. What are our options here? So, crying when upset, yes. Shout when angry, no. Smiling when happy, no. It's his laugh. Being quiet and thoughtful, trembling when afraid, well, it has to be that. The word aggression in line 14, we've already talked about this. It means kindness, no. Sorrow, no. Joy, no. Unfriendliness, yes. Or agreement. You can go and check that, but you, we've already worked out that's what it is. Which words in the fourth paragraph are hyphenated? Silver and back, once and, ba and black, help and less, bands and trips, females and males. So the fourth paragraph, let's go in here. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. Hyphenated, once, black. Hyphenated when you've got a little dash in between them. Okay, once and black. 31. The word in line 15, captivity. Captivity, we already discussed, means when you go to like a zoo, for example, um, it means confinement, to be confined, kept somewhere. The word but, B U T, in line 15, is a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, or a conjunction. Um, the word but is a conjunction, it's where you split two parts of a sentence together. He was really, he was really clever, and then the second part of the sentence could be, he failed his test. But he failed his test. But let's just check just to make sure. 30, 15. 15 here. 20, 15. Gorillas can live for 35 years in the wild, but they can live for over 50 years in captivity. If I took the word but out there, I can have two separate sentences. Gorillas can live for 35 years in the wild, they can live for over 50 years in ca captivity. So it could be two sentences. Let's call it a conjunction. Where are we here? Uh, 33. The word in paragraph 5 that means plant eaters is herbivores. So termites, grubs, food and larvae, they don't make sense there. Herbivores will eat uh, grass and vegetables and things. Um, the verb in line 25, a verb is a doing word. Communicate probably. Language, so language isn't, isn't a verb, it's a noun. Facial is a describing word. Gorillas is a noun. Body is a noun. It has to be communicate. You could check if you want. I'm going to 25. I think it's about using sign language, but let's double check. 25. In nature, gorillas communicate with each other. A doing word, communicate with each other. Again, we didn't read the passage there, but we were able to work it out. Again, same as the last one here. This one's a school uniform. We're going to find a mistake or we're going to put an N at the side. Many people believe that, it is un that it's unfair to force children to wear school uniform. It doesn't have an apostrophe. It is unfair. There be an apostrophe in there. Some mistakes here. To wear school uniform. And they should be able to wear casual clothes to school instead. We've then got a capital letter here and a comma. If that's a capital letter, that needs to be a full stop. So we put a mistake here. Um, they argue that wearing their own clothes can help pupils express their individuality and sense of style. No mistakes there. Those opposing uniform claim that although uniforms may be cheaper, this apostrophe doesn't need to be there, okay? There's no um, ownership there at all. So this should just be uniforms with an S. It's a plural, and plurals generally don't need apostrophes. Uniforms may be cheaper than casual clothes. Parents buy their children casual clothes to wear outside of schools, okay? No mistake there. To wear outside school anyway, why force them to pay extra for uniform as well? And you have full stop there, but that's a question. Why force them? So it should have a question mark there. So the mistake's here. Uh, proponents of wearing school uniform claim that forcing children to wear, this is a new sentence, and there's no starting capital letter. So it's here. Uh, forcing children to wear similar clothing at school is fair, as not everyone, random capital letter there, what's it say, can afford expensive outfits. We're on to the last one now. Um, again, we'll not read it. It says Whitefoot the Wood Mouse. Looks like a fiction to me, um, but we'll, we'll not read it just yet. We'll come and have a look at the questions. 
just here. Okay, the proper noun, a proper noun in line 22 is what? A proper noun is a noun that has a capital letter usually, and so noun that's named. So you would have teacher would be a common noun, Mr. Montgomery, me when I was a teacher, would be a proper noun. School is a common noun, the name of your school, whatever it happens to be, you know, Carrick Primary School is a proper noun. So the clue here is where's the, where's the capital letter? And it's here, Whitefoot, which is a name. And we haven't even read the passage. And it's line 22, we can check if you want, but we know we're right because we know our knowledge of grammar. 20, 21, 22, Whitefoot was working so hard and so fast to get all those delicious bits of food. So Whitefoot, here he is, a uh, character, and I think he's a mouse. So this is like Whitefoot the wood, Whitefoot the wood mouse, there you go. Uh, the verbs in line 18, verbs are doing words, delicious and little, they're not doing words. Stomach and crumbs, neither are they, they're nouns, they're adjectives. Carry and filled, they're verbs. He and his, they're not. Remainder and began, they're not. It has to be carry and filled. We haven't even looked the passage, but we know that. We can check it, we can go to 18, double check it. There's 19, 18. When he had filled his little stomach, he began to carry the remainder, doing words. The noun in line 13, Bowser, could be a noun, it's a capital B, could be a name of someone. Farmer is also a noun, could be that as well. Still, don't think so, but you can have a still in a farm, so it might be that. Bench is a noun, perfectly isn't, so we can get rid of perfectly, but the rest could be. So line 13, we do need to look this one up, so 14, 13. Instead of going, he sat down on a bench and kept perfectly still. Farmer Brown and Bowser the Hound went out. Now, I'd argue Bowser is a noun, and so is bench. But let's have a look. 9.13. Um, they probably mean a common noun, because these two are proper nouns. So I would highlight bench, but if you were in my class and you were putting this down and you put those two, I would give you the mark, because they are nouns still. But what they maybe mean is they want the common noun, not the proper noun. Uh, the best meaning of timid as used in line five. So timid means shy, okay? So we could put that, we know it's going to be uh, probably kind of tired, kind of friendly, fearful, maybe fearful is most likely you're shy or scared. So timid is going to be fearful. Now, let's pretend you didn't know what timid meant, okay? Maybe you don't. So you go to line five. Uh, just here, and you try and work it out. So Forrest is there a more timid little fellow, oh sorry, he knew that not in all the green forest is there a more timid little fellow than Whitefoot. So something little fellow, so he's talking about him being timid, and he thought he would be a fine thing to be able to win the confidence of such a shy little chap. It even tells you um, what it means there later in the sentence. The word in line four, acquainted, means whenever you get to know someone, okay? The friendly, eat together, play together, hidden or full. Line four, go. Uh, right away, he made up his mind to get acquainted with Whitefoot. So get, get to know him, okay? Um, to get friendly, to play together, it'll be to get friendly, okay? Okay, last one then. These are diff slightly different here. Um, it says, answer these questions. You may have to think about the passage you have read. Look back at these if you need to. Look also at the contents, the beginning of the booklet and the index, the glossary and the bibliography at the end of the booklet if you need to. A fictional narrative of considerable length of plot and characters is called a what? A novel, a letter, a diary and a magazine. So fiction is usually do with not something's made up, but if it's made up, it's not going to be a magazine or a letter, it might be a letter, a diary, but your thoughts are not going to be that, it probably has to be a novel, it is a novel. The words in the glossary which are associated with gorillas are, now the glossary, I just found here, I don't know if this will have this attached here, I don't think we'll have a glossary attached, um, our remainder and ventured, well, let's just work it out, we actually haven't got a glossary, we could probably work it out. Remainder and venture, technology and casual, knuckles and species, proponents and individuality. Well, what words would you notice from your gorillas? You can go back and read it. Not going to be technology, but knuckles was one we're talking about, and species was going to be that. So even if you haven't seen it, you can work it out. An exclamation mark is used to indicate spoken words. No, that would be speech marks. To indicate a question is be asked. No, that would be a question mark. To indicate the end of a sentence. No, that could be a full stop. And did it get something exciting being written? Yes, I always used to say it was for shouting, but it could be shouting out of excitement or even fear. 59. 
The words which have the past tense of the verb do and bring are did and brought. I did that, I brought that. And last question, the next question, you have to choose the best word to complete the sentence so that it makes sense. Choose one of the answers and mark a letter on the sheet. The owl something the mouse and captures it. Sees the mouse and captures it. Sees the mouse, sees the mouse and sees. It's going to be this one. He sees, okay, he's able to see him. And that's us. Thanks for watching.